much. Gracias. Forgive me for uh, speaking in English. Thank you for the courtesy of uh, listening to me in English. I, I used to speak Spanish when I was younger fairly well, but uh, it would be a mistake for me to try to speak in Spanish now, but I appreciate the courtesy. Uh, thank you, Alberto Suarez, uh, for your introduction. Uh, Javier Manzanares, uh, the president of the Telefonica Group. Uh, and may I say it is a great honor to be here with uh, Luis Gianpietri, uh, your vice president. Thank you very much for the courtesy uh, of being here uh, today. I have been greatly looking forward to this uh, speech. I am very impressed with the activities that have been taking place uh, during this conference. Uh, I have learned a, a lot about the activities underway in Peru, uh, and I compliment you on uh, all of the progress that has been made here. I want to talk to you today about uh, the climate crisis, uh, and I want to uh, put some of these thoughts in the context of the challenges you are facing uh, here uh, in Peru. Uh, of course, I know that you feel probably uh, very proud of the great uh, resources that you have here. Uh, this is one of the nations in the entire world with the most uh, diversity. Uh, Peru is famous for being a, a nation uh, known for its mega diversity. Uh, I know that uh, the number of living species uh, here is almost unparalleled uh, in the world. And of course, as a citizen of the United States, uh, I have paid attention to the growing ecotourism that is uh, uh, flourishing in Peru. Also, the uh, incredible variety of organic products and uh, the unique cuisine here, and may I thank my host for a fantastic lunch uh, earlier today, which uh, was one of the best that I have uh, ever had. I enjoyed uh, a conversation with a large number of uh, leaders here in, in Peru. Um, I hope that you also feel very positive about the tremendous uh, economic progress here in Peru. Uh, I have watched uh, Peru for a long time as uh, someone in the U.S. government. I served in the Congress and in the Senate and in the White House for many years. And it is not for me to say, but I certainly believe that the record of the last uh, several years here in Peru is quite an astonishing uh, one and a very successful one. Three presidents of three different parties, uh, many different uh, ministers, and uh, central bank policy, and all through this uh, long period, you have uh, stayed on a steady course that ha has now created uh, economic conditions that the rest of the world is noticing uh, and admiring. And perhaps uh, not too many years from now, people will look back uh, and talk about uh, the Peruvian miracle, uh, because uh, the poverty rate, while still I know a source of distress, has come down, and uh, exports are up, and income is up, uh, the growth rate is uh, really uh, uh, very, very uh, Im impressive. And the rest of the world economy, as you are keenly aware, has gone through a period of disruption with what is known as the Great Recession. And uh, even during that period, Peru continued to have a, a positive economic growth rate. Uh, it, very impressive. Uh, when I asked uh, a friend in Peru uh, how he felt about uh, the economy last year, he said, I feel fine. And it reminded me of a, a story I'd like to share quickly. I come from Nashville, Tennessee in the United States. Uh, some of you may have heard of it. It is the home of uh, country and western music. It, its nickname is Music City, and there is a, an institution there known as the Grand Old Opry. 
uh, and it was closed uh, for several months, uh, and I'll tell you why in a few minutes, but many years ago, 35 years ago, when I was a young congressman, I was having meetings with my constituents, and at the end of a long Saturday, I was driving back to my home in Tennessee, and I was listening to the Grand Old Opry on the radio, and they used to have a, a woman who was a comedian named Cousin Minnie Pearl. This may, name may mean nothing to you, but she had a big straw hat with the price tag still hanging on it. And she was known for being from way out in a rural area in the country, a very unsophisticated. Uh, and she told a story on the radio that I was reminded of by my Peruvian friend. Uh, she told about a farmer who was involved in an accident on the highway. Uh, and he went to court and sued the other driver for damages. And the other driver hired a lawyer. And the lawyer put this farmer on the witness stand and cross-examined him and asked questions. And the lawyer asked, isn't it true that immediately after this accident, you said, I feel fine? <laughs> And the farmer said, well, it's not that simple. You see, I was driving my cow to town in the back of my truck, and this man came driving across the center of the road, and the lawyer said, wait a minute. We don't want to hear a long story. We're in the middle of the trial. Just answer the question, yes or no. Did you or did you not say, after the accident, I feel fine? And the farmer said, well, I was leading up to that. You see, I was taking my cow to town in the back of my truck. And this man came driving across the center of the road and ran right into my truck and knocked it over. Threw me out, threw the cow out. I was on one side, the cow was on the other. The policeman came up and took one look at that cow and said, hmm, she is suffering. Pulled out his gun and shot her right between the eyes. <laughs> came around to my side of the truck and said, how do you feel? <laughs> so I said, I feel fine. Uh, oh. and I think that my friend from Peru felt something of that emotion when uh, your economy was still growing when the rest of the world was going through such a terrible uh, economic catastrophe. But uh, this continued sustained success uh, it is uh, the mark of genuine and true uh, progress across party lines, reflecting a consensus from uh, the, the, the mainstream of the business community, the society, the university uh, community, uh, and the people of Peru. So uh, I, I certainly want to congratulate you on that. And of course there are many continuing uh, problems, and it is not for me uh, to discuss those, but uh, continuing on this uh, economic course, I think, is a, a very important uh, task.